Good evening. It's never been widely thought that Scotland has much influence at the heart of Europe, but today's leaked report from the executive's most senior man in Brussels has roundly condemned Whitehall for making little or no effort to fight the distinctly Scottish corner. The report clearly accuses senior London civil servants and ministers of ignoring the wants and needs of their Scottish counterparts through a combination of ignorance, neglect or even deliberate tactics. In Whitehall, it would seem that Scottish executive business is fairly low down the list of priorities, if indeed it's on the radar at all. The leaked report paints a picture of ministers and officials being kept out of the loop, while it's not uncommon for the executive's views to be simply ignored. Those working for Scotland in London and Brussels complained that small issues are making it difficult for the executive to adequately represent Scotland's interests in some EU policy areas. One of the most common complaints is that Whitehall tends to forget about consulting, even on large-scale policy initiatives, and that departments don't engage early enough in the consultation process. It's also claimed Whitehall departments have deliberately excluded the executive from policy formulation. And there's been clear discontent about the manner in which Whitehall has treated the executive. Today, the SNP, who circulated the report, were quick to make political capital out of the apparent strained relationship between the executive and Whitehall. Jack McConnell, meanwhile, said the leaks an early draft and doesn't reflect the true position. The important thing here is the objective that we set. We've built up a rep reputation for Scotland and Europe over these last few years. Devolution gives us the chance to use the power of the UK, the big member state of the European Union, to influence the European Union at that level, but it also gives us a chance to express our own Scottish voice directly to the Commission and the Council. That is what we have been doing. I believe they can be better at that, we can be better at that, the UK can be better at it on our behalf too, and this report in its final form later in the year will give us the chance to achieve that objective. Certainly, when Mr McConnell met the European Commission President, Jose Barroso, here last year, Scotland's position in Europe was apparently rosy. I believe that Scotland uh, has a voice and it's heard in Brussels. We have a great respect for Scotland. That's why I'm here, for instance. That's why I'm trying to interact also with the, the Scottish uh, authorities. Now, about the debate about the future status of Scotland, that's, I leave to the Scottish people and also to in the, in the framework of the United Kingdom. But doubts that important Scottish issues with a European dimension are not being given the focus they deserve remain. Scotland's fishing industry has long maintained that Europe is failing to take on board concerns for its future. Bertie Armstrong of the Fishermen's Federation says today's leaked report underlines this. This is what happened uh, uh, this Christmas time. We went forward with a set of priorities that were uh, formed, forged and agreed with the Scottish executive. And when we got to Brussels, we found uh, uh, that, that, that this was not the UK priority. These were not the UK priorities. BBC Scotland's political editor, Brian Taylor, meanwhile, says it's a damning report which must be taken seriously. It is quite remarkable language for a civil service to talk about uh, an issue having disastrous consequences for uh, executive policy. They, they usually would say, you know, will be a bit of an irritation to ministers or perhaps we might want to consider other ways of looking at this. Do we use the very word disastrous in a document which was a draft, yes, but a draft that went to ministers. It went to ministers in advance of their going to Brussels for negotiations. He speeded up, in other words, the, the production of that on the understanding that there would be a, a, a fuller version later. This was a, a remarkably condemnatory approach to take from the senior man in Brussels of the executive towards the current setup. The question now is, having noted the leaked report's criticisms, will due notice be taken of its recommendations in order to gain Scotland a stronger place in Europe and the respect of civil servants in Whitehall? Well, in a short while, we'll hear one elected member of the European Parliament on how well Scotland's voice is heard in Europe. But first, the views of Europe's man in Scotland. Neil Mitchison's title is Head of the European Commission Office in Scotland. And earlier this evening, I asked him if uh, this was a familiar story to the Commission, if in fact devolved governments often present this sort of problem. The Commission 
talks to everyone, the Commission listens to everyone. And sure, sometimes you hear people feeling that they haven't been talked to enough, they haven't had things explained, or that they haven't been listened to. It's a familiar enough story. You know, I don't think that we do our communication perfectly, but I think we do a fairly good job and I think we're aware that we have to improve and are trying to improve. Is there some sort of mechanism whereby Scotland could complain about its treatment if in fact it ca uh, that uh, proves to be the case and would the Commission then take action? It's not so much a question of complaining about treatment, I think. I mean, the real question is, are the views of Scots, be they the Scottish Executive, the Scottish Parliament or ordinary individual Scots, NGOs, Costler, you name it, are they properly taken into account in the European system? You know, we think we have the mechanisms. I think you have to distinguish when we're starting to talk about legislation that we're thinking of making. I will give you an example, a paper we have out for consultation at the moment on a maritime policy. At that point, we put out a green paper and we go out and talk to everyone. For example, here in, uh, in Holyrood, we had a meeting organised by the Scottish Parliament exactly on the EU maritime policy at which the principal official involved with it came over here and talked to people, explained what the Commission was trying to do and listened to their views. At that stage, we're very keen to talk to everyone. I think we do it you know, reasonably well. I think we have still something to learn. I think you have to distinguish between that point when we're thinking about legislation, when everyone, the door is open to everyone, and when we've actually proposed legislation, we have a proposed directive. Once the Commission has proposed a directive, yes, it goes to the Council, which is of course the Member States, mm -hmm. and it goes to the Parliament. And at that point, the main people we're talking to are the officials of the Member State, in this case United Kingdom, and the MEPs. I would also say remember the MEPs, because the MEPs from an area, the MEPs from Scotland, for example, can and do work together on what they see as common cross-party issues affecting Scotland. Um, at that point, it is true that we have a limited number of sort of principal interlocutors. But the really important point for Scotland, it seems to me, is that we should be, and we are, getting in uh, to discuss between the Commission and all the bodies in Scotland long before the legislation is proposed. That's already happening. We had a couple of, uh, in the last month, we've had two Commission officials over talking to the European Committee of the Scottish Parliament and listening to what they had to say, talking to them about better governance, talking to them about implementation of directives within Scotland. Okay, so although